Liu Kinming, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about My your wonderful uh, edited uh, volume that has just come up. Perhaps you can first start by uh, describing um, the book. When it first started, I had no idea that it's going to be turned out into a book. Uh, that's how, ha how it happened was one day I was reading a newspaper and Richard Bernstein, he was writing for the International Herald Tribune at that time, in his farewell column, he mentioned about his first trip to China through Law Wu Bridge in Hong Kong, between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. I was startled and then I was totally captivated by it. And, and I just by chance asking my good friend Jonathan Mursky, oh, have you read uh, Mr. Bernstein's article? And he said, oh, yes, I was on the same trip. I was, wow, tell me about that. Write uh, uh, that story down for me. So that's how I started. At, at first I was just thinking, okay, one or two stories to talk about that interesting episode. Then one thing leading to the other. I was running a website newspaper in Hong Kong, so I have a weekly deadline to make. Whoever responds positively to my invitation, I will edit and rent the story. That's how, how, how it all started. Could you um, share a couple of highlights of uh, some of the stories that you think particularly uh, reflected uh, some of the preconceptions and, and, and the idealism for, China's, uh, for China? I think uh, lots of uh, those vivid episodes were, were written by lots of the writers there, and there are a lot of them. And I, a number of them, of course, uh, strike me with a deeper impression than the other. For example, Perry Link. Uh, he went to China full of admiration and uh, maybe a bit of illusion at that time of what China really was. And one particular episode was uh, he, he at that point believed in the uh, propaganda that China has wiped out all fries or mosquitoes, that kind of bad insect pest. One day during his trip, he saw a fry on the table. And I think that, that really made a, a strong impression uh, in him. And then I think one thing leading to the other, you compare and say, wait a minute, that's what we were told and that's what we saw, I so I think they, they started to question many of them. That's related to the, uh, many of the visits uh, raised this um, uh, theme of kind of being presented with a carefully managed yes. Potemkin village uh, library or a Potemkin village family or a Potemkin village village. Um, can you share maybe a couple of highlights of those experiences? Oh, I, I think, um, I, again, lots of uh, interesting episodes. I, and one, one, another particular one struck me was uh, by Jerome Cohen. He was in, I forgot, he must be in Beijing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the subway at that point was still under construction. And they were taking a tour of that. And somehow the tour guide insists that the subway is already in operation. Obviously, it wasn't. So Jerry, he was f very naughty. He said, well, uh, when- As he remains. Yes, <laughs> when, when the delegation was leaving, he said, wait a minute, I'm going to stay behind and look uh, to see whether it's really in operation or not. So I, I think that, that, that there's a very, very funny episode. And I also think another episode was uh, he and his wife really wanted to go to Xi'an but somehow it was not uh, approved at first. So uh, his wife was very upset and Jerry, they were in the hotel room and she, he was signaling to her, saying, raise your, vo your voice to show your uh, displeasure. The next morning they said, oh, by the way, mm, yeah, you, you, you could go to Xi'an. So I think these are very colorful episodes. The most recent issue of our online journal, the China Rights Forum, uh, focuses thematically on uh, China at home. One area we had not looked at was the role of foreigners mm -hmm. in China. All of the contributors in your book had different kinds of interactions with Chinese. Could you give some examples? I would think uh, it depends, of course, which period you're talking about. But I think generally speaking, I, I think it's kind of a mutual reinforcement of uh, prejudice and biases, it could be, 
and not all, but it could be one of the heavy uh, main elements. What I mean is, under the communist propaganda, of course, they were saying, okay, all foreigners were spies, something like that. Well, you, you have to be very vigilant, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, what, what I mean is, so when they finally have the first encounter of uh, foreigners, well, it seems to them that, oh, they really ask that kind of questions. Uh, uh, the party has been warning us, so I think it, it could be. Uh, Give an example, because I know there were a lot that I, when you said that. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, again, Jer Jerry Cohen, he has lots of great episodes. I must say, uh, he, he the story, yeah f first morning in in Beijing, I believe, he went to a, a little restaurant to to eat, and 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 he he tried to start a conversation, and no one responded. Because uh, I, I'm sure they were all taught that foreigners were spy. Uh, the first question would be how's today's weather. Secondly, would be what's the name of this dish, and the third uh, question would be, uh, oh, what happened to Lin Biao? So I think well, <laughs> so some of those foreigners they probably did ask such a question, and they did. And, and they did. So I, I think it's kind of a, an unfortunate situation. It could be a mutual reinforcement. I would say, oh yeah, they they were like that. Perhaps the next book project might be to edit Chinese perceptions of their first foreign encounter. Yes. You, uh, what was their experience when they met their first foreigner? Yes. A a a actually, we are uh, going to do that. And we will expand it to the other way. Is, uh, we will invite the Chinese to talk about their first visit to America. And uh, so I would say stay tuned and I will try to invite people to ask them to write down their stories. I hope, I, I think it should be quite interesting. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.